have the conversation. White gold, it's the story of Ghana's largest natural salt mining resource. Ashanti is noted for gold and Adar is noted for salt production. While gold mining has brought significant development to Ghana, the vast salt mining area of Adar is yet to take its place as its significant contributor. On assignment titled The Salt City, Joseph Armstrong Gold Alokwe explores the issues, the competing interest and efforts to make Adar Songo one of the largest exporters of salt for the benefit of the people of Adar. Salt City showing this Wednesday, April 20 on the assignment at 9 p.m. prompt. Also available on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. White Gold, Salt City, Roland is here. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you too? This is another blockbuster from you, I like to call it. So. Yeah, definitely. And um, we just uh, thought that we needed to do more exploratory work. Mm. And you know that comprehensively we had done a lot of work over the last couple of mm. months. And kudos to also uh, the team, A New Day, mm. Francis Doku as uh, the general manager for TV. TV. We've been able to comprehensively give expansive um, activations to many of the things that right. we intended to do and, and um, this documentary was just to look at what could be the benefit or the downsides of an industry potentially mm. that has been left unexploited well over the period within the advanced salt enclave and um, we're hoping that um, this also will draw audiences mm. locally <coughs> but also internationally to the content mm. that has uh, been well packaged I, I, I do by know, Armstrong Gold. Alokbe. Right, Alokbe, right. And, and he's done a fantastic job. I know this has been following that. You have been following that as well. Um, I'm looking at how this documentary scratches the people where they itch. Number one, this is how the people have lived for a long time. They have created their own pockets of mining areas for their salt. But then there's a bigger conversation as to whether to clear the lagoon, let it flow so that we can create patches, create a whole industry and export and expand. How is that conversation panning out in your documentary? Uh, this has well been interspersed or infused with a lot of expert advice on the field. And it's also because if you look at tens of years, if not um, decades of the mining of salt mm. along the shores of our country. Right. It's been done without um, any big technology, but mm. on a very small scale mm -hmm. until we had uh, electrochem coming in. Right. But um, alongside attendant um, difficulties in accepting or getting a buy-in mm. from some local people, why they needed to come in and do an expansive work and, and put a lot of technological input in industrializing it. Mm -hmm. Look, we shouldn't be kidding ourselves. <clears throat> We're living in a, a world where for hydrocarbons and the end derivatives, salt is a big intake That's or right. processes That's for right. this. We have a petroleum Even industry. Even for refining our oil. Exactly, we have right. a petroleum industry. So if there's going to be a lot of uh, offtake or, or, or demand for it, why not do it with uh, some great technology? Mm. But of course, also looking at the opinions and sentiments that um, all these evoke among the traditional people in the communities, but also looking at the end benefits for everybody else. And, you, and that's you, what we you, decided you, to You do. mentioned Electrochem, and I know that in the last two years or so, even with the endorsement of Parliament, Electrochem has come up. There's been a lot of traditional agitation against Electrochem. I'm trying to understand what Electrochem is doing, how that sinks in with your documentary, and how that makes the lives of the people better. Because, again, you mentioned the gold mining areas. We have seen people mine gold. They have taken everything away. How are the salt people, white gold, salt city, how are they benefiting? Yes. So we try to just suppose this with what is happening in the Niger Delta in relation to oil, as far as Nigeria is related. Right. But also trying to do a composite um, uh, intrusiveness or retrospection about how we have an industry, if um, well harnessed, could benefit everybody. At the end of the day, the small pockets of industry would need to reach far and international markets. Right. And this is where perhaps uh, the bigger industry and the objective for Electrochem will come in. Mm. But how do we create a better understanding for our audiences, but also the local people, right. to know that if there is some level of collaboration mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. this salt mm -hmm. to be harnessed 
at mm. a bigger industrial level. Right. It could benefit the local people by way of the creation of jobs, mm. which mm. already exist, mm. but will be better harnessed. But also some level of technological inference or uh, practices that could also be uh, translated into knowledge mm. for the local mm. people as mm. well. Mm. But also looking at the within the sidelines of what is going to be done, the other benefits that could go in as far as the value chain is concerned. Mm. And that is where perhaps we also decided to uh, speak to the local chiefs, speak okay. to the public opinion. Are, are they on the to... same page with, for example, Electrochem? Because this is what Electrochem wants to do. They have been mining salt for a long time in their own way. Somebody comes in and says, I want to do it in this way. Are they on the same page? Yeah, definitely. We know that before this, the, there hasn't been a, a one-way public opinion in relation to the communities in the involvement mm. of the industrial purposes mm. for which salt needed to be mm. mined. And that is why we decided to go in to look at um, what the pros and cons are industrial use, right. industrial right. exploration, and then also the small-scale mining as it is. So who is going to benefit at the end of the day? Mm. How is it going to be done? And then looking at the sentiments and concerns of those who may not necessarily agree. We do understand even for uh, when we wanted to start our oil industry, there are a lot of sentiments That's within right. the enclave, right. even though it is 63 nautical miles mm. away from the shores. Because when you ex ex explore oil mm. or you drill oil, mm. there could be some env environmental concerns or hazards that uh, it will come up with. But how do we as an enclave, as a country, Right. try to right. protect all the wetlands, the, the uh, fauna and fauna and, exit, and, mm. and everybody um, that has a stake in mm. there. And that's why we decided to go and look at um, the negative public opinion, the positives as well. Mm. Adana is a big enclave. It's, it's, it spreads mm. along the lagoon where we mm. have the sea meeting, the lake as well. But also looking at why people think it's important for mm. this to come in and why they think that it's not as well. See, I'll tell you something. When I was young, my dad used to take me towards that area. Tetel and tilapia, all those things. It's a dead area now. How will this documentary that you have supervised and produced solve that problem and bring back the excitement around the other area? That's what I'm looking for. So the intention, apart from gauging public opinion, is also uh, post the airing of the documentary, bringing the industrial people from Electrochem and mm. also the environmentalists who um, perhaps think that this has to be done in a certain way to shape the way it has to be undertaken mm. so that we don't have concerns being raised years after it's, it's been done. Because no matter what we think, we have the industry that is going to take off. It's the Electrochem mm. uh, people have been given their approval. Right. The chiefs also either in support or against still exist. Mm. So how do we undertake this um, at activity for, for, for which holistically uh, for which it's going to go on for decades mm. so that the, at the end of the day there's some level of technological transfer everybody is satisfied we don't have a repeat of what mm. has happened to the mining communities and then everybody also has a certain buy-in on mm. what is going to be done so it's basically to I, look I, at I, what, what I, our concerns Royal, are I have an it, opportunity to read a bit of the brief from Parliament post the approval of electrochem yeah. and we, we, we did too in the preparation of the right, script for right. this. Now, I've seen, for example, that beyond what electrochem wants to do, they've also told parliament, and I like to base my documentation on parliament, that they will also create amphi mining points for the traditional people. So it's not just electrochem trying to mine, create jobs, whatever it is, but they also want to give people an opportunity. If that is so, why is there resistance? Well, there will always be resistance because, for example, when you take the oil transportation industry that we have in Ghana, mm. uh, there are other derivatives within the value chain or down the lane. Right. Um, and for example, because I grew up in Ashima, I know about Billy Billy, etc. But you find somebody who perhaps may get remnants of oil either from tanks, etc., who would also be living on that as a form of existence or a living. Right. And that person will put up a nice self container you'll be surprised. So the concern that has been expressed by the people against such a big project um, is supposed to well intended manifest in the content that we're creating by way of this documentary. Right. And also looking at how they're also going to benefit mm. 
undertake their artisanal way of mining salt right. while the industrial activity is also ongoing. Okay, so, so we have this ongoing, uh, that a big ongoing, one, where we can even have uh, exportation of salt mm, from Ghana, mm, which has never mm, happened before. Mm. But for also, Nigeria to refine their oil. But also the local people benefiting while this big project is ongoing down the stream or mm. uh, the lower end, we have artisanal mining also undertaken. So it's not as if that I, this I, is going to be a negative mm, blueprint I, I'm at going all. to ask you when the documentary is ending but i have one quick question education once industry comes up children don't like to go to school they like to go and work there to earn coins how is this addressing it have you for example spoken to electro camp to say we're building schools. I didn't get that detail in the parliamentary document. Yeah, yeah. So, so one of the things that we're trying to do is to not to give a certain focus to uh, the industrial enclave, but also the entity, so that mm. it doesn't look like we're just doing a documentary that mm. will just promote. No, 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 right. no, no, no. But also, you know, shaping the opinions within the discussions that we've had so far, mm. prior to <clears throat> the starting of this project. It has already begun with a lot of investment. So it looks like for those who are against it, they'll have no voice at all. Right. But we also don't want to leave this to posterity in which the media that is supposed to educate and inform and has, done the, and elevate. Has, has not aired the sentiments and the concerns about the both people. sides at all. Right. And that's what we've been able to do so that we hold responsible the, mm. the various entities or, or, or players within all this drama that we're going to have. But, but, but I think that uh, technology has come to improve or shape lives. It is also to ensure that people are able to get knowledge transferred into the minds of others. And then there could be an enclave that will involve not only communities, but also education where people could um, go to school, whether right. it's the Kwame Nkrumah right. Investor right. of Science and right. Technology, have be experts in the field right. and employed right. so that we only don't have Indians or other expatriates who will be perhaps employed in such an industry. Right. But also you look at the value chain, people will have something to do um, maybe a decade or two from today. Well, I thank you very much. When is it airing? It's airing Wednesday, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. TV3 across social media platforms as well. Definitely. TV3 Ghana on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And join. And Roland will give you a good job, always. always, uh, always. But again, I have to say that it's by Armstrong Gold, and he knows the area very well. Alogbe. Yes, okay. Yeah. I'm strong gold dialogue, and he, he is the one who put this great piece yeah, together. Yeah. Uh, you look at the shots, and I say that it's a masterpiece. I'm strong gold dialogue. It's actually an indigen from the area, right? With Alfredo Cancio on the VO there. They are all from that area. They have to go back home and contribute their quota. Roland, thank you very much. Indeed. I Roland thank you is, too, uh, Johnny Hughes. The boss of our documentaries desk here. Next, we have Adina. Adina. Pay attention. See you after the break.